OCM. On behalf of the uh, uh, systems of care, I'd like to raise our hands. Uh, thank you, Auntie, for asking me to speak and help be the MC for tonight's event. I <laughs> uh, just wanted to go over some agenda items before we get the evening started. Um, opening prayer will be done by the Bob family. You see off to my right. Just kidding. Uh, we'd like to, um, and for our for our guests here this evening, that that we have some travelers from from outside of our community uh, that'll be participating in a uh, in a play written by uh, Daryl Hilaire. It's called Sunny Six Killer by the uh, Redskins, and uh, one of our guests here. Ray Thunderchild from BC or from up from Canada. Uh, we welcome you to the special event to share this time, to share a meal, share the time with our Lummi family. See them. Like to raise our hands to our distinguished elders and our chief Salik, Haishka, Alta. Thank you for making it tonight, Auntie. <laughs> Um, we'd like to um, acknowledge some of uh, any of the grandparents committees that's here tonight. Is there anybody from the grandparents committee? Uh, is anybody here from the VHF committee? Yes. Can you raise your hands, please, so we can recognize you? Thank you. We'd like to also uh, let you know that we have a sign-in sheet here for a raffle. Systems of Care has provided us some neat gifts. So throughout the evening, they'll be calling off some numbers. So be sure to sign up for the raffle. There's going to be relay games over in the field for the kids. The Autumn Rose Canoe Club will be providing canoe, uh, canoe rides if anybody's interested. Autumn Rose is here, so if you'd like to go out on a canoe, just let her know. Um, we're, the iPod student group uh, will be honored uh, for their uh, attendance on the canoe journey. So we have some of our canoe pullers here that's going to talk about their experiences for our trip up to Bella Bella, Canada. Um, the cultural department has provided us with coloring books, CDs with Lummi language, and storytelling. And then uh, to, to, uh, for the grand finale tonight, there'll be a fireworks display. All right. So with that, I'd like to ask the Bob family to see you. Open in the meeting with the prayer, please.
and ask them what their wishes is for their children. I haven't stopped thinking about Bunny and her grandchildren and her cry when she sat at the table with us to tell us, the Lummi Nation, what her wishes are for her grandchildren. But we all know we have addictive children that causes the system not to allow to put our kids in dangerous places. And that is the drugs, the sexual abuse, the drug trafficking. Those are the things that we have to be honest with. And I've been very honest with Bunny how we're going to work hard to get her kids back in her care. I know her pain. Is it weird for you? And I know numerous of other <laughs> and grandparents' pain that are jumping through hoops after hoops so to have their children. So the MOA is a memorandum of agreement that empowers the inherited rights of our grandmothers, our grandfathers. They have rights. No one can teach any child to be lummy except a lummy. But instead, all those kids are scattered all over. And I just watched Oprah yesterday, and those kids have a hole in their soul. And I, I just go, oh, wow, I really relate to that. Because I know she has a hole in her soul for her grandbabies. And she does need help. So well, that's what the memorandum of agreement is, is what the Lummi Nation said that we were going to do, A, B, and C. And that the state of Washington is going to honor Lummi Nation's position. And that is to take exclusive jurisdiction of our children. But we got to be honest about why our children are being removed from our homes because of drugs and many others. But we have to heal that. That's why I'm sitting here. And I've seen many successes with our families, too. A lot of families been reunified. And that's why I want to thank Auntie Donna for bringing us together in a good way to allowing us to do a little bit of healing. There's little conversations going on in homes, how much everybody's grieving. We pretend that we don't grieve. We go to work and act like we don't grieve. And we do. It's better to be busy than to grieve. And I have conversations with my elders. I talked to Uncle Smitty this morning, and he told me what to tell you. Is that we're here to bring our children home. We're here to bring our children home. Not physically, but emotionally, so that child does not have an empty soul, that no one sat around and that forgot about them. I can tell you the horrific stories that had me trembling of these children that were left out there. And the grandmother was asked to come to the table and she wept and said, thank you for including me in my grandkids' life. And that's what this MOA does, is give the Lummi Nation people a voice. And that was the biggest trophy in the whole world, knowing this grandmother got to share her wishes for her nine grandchildren that are out in the system. And so guess what? She gets to have a visit with her grandkids. Yeah. She gets to have a visit with her grandkids because she doesn't want her grandkids to know that she hasn't forgot about them. I don't know one grandmother or grandfather that doesn't ever forget about their grandkids. And there's a lot more work to do because we got to be transparent. We got to be transparent. We have to talk about the issues. 
that are hurting our little baby. I talked to my kids' birthday last week about stopping molestation, sexual abuse. In my family, it has to start with me, not behavioral health or care or someone else. It has to start with me to tell your grandkids it's not okay for someone to touch you if it doesn't feel okay. I tell my grandkids, Woo! you go, Grandma! <laughs> That's where it starts. It starts in our homes. I never want my grandkids to be left out, to have the tools to say, I miss my grandfather today. He just shared that with me yesterday. And I got to ask him, what do you miss most about it? <laughs> So we get to talk about that. Thank God, thank God, God has given me the tools to talk about these things with my family, with my brothers and sisters. Because I don't ever want them to be hurt, ever. We're going to start breaking the cycle by starting with our own family. She, she put a fire under me, Bunny did. Because she was telling me how many years she had her baby. And I told her I make a promise that I will fight for her. I can only be her legs and her voice. Her, the danger is gone now. The danger is incarcerated. But let her go to church with her grandbaby. That's all we're asking. We're not asking for anything. We're not asking for a budget or transportation or anything. She just wants her baby. That's all she wants is her baby. I remember her seeing at the other systems of care gathering, she used to have all her grandkids. I freak out when my grandkids are over at the playground. Like, thank you, cousin, for go grabbing them for me. I don't take the teachings lightly. Be careful now. Keep your kids close. Don't keep them after dark. Don't grieve in the evening time. I'm trying to implement those things so that my kids have a little bit of teaching. Just a little bit. And I'm just so grateful, Auntie Donna. So grateful. <laughs> so grateful, you know, for this opportunity. God put Bunny on my trail today. And today's reading is that we have to get out of self and pray for others. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to pray for Bunny that we can bring her back to the table so she can have her baby. So I thank you for listening. I'm very compassionate about the subject because there's a lot of kids out there with, with empty souls. And we think there was loving, caring, beautiful families out there. Beautiful, non-tribal families. But they can never fill that empty spot in their soul. So thank each and every one of you. I love you, Ray. I'm thinking about you. Love you. So good. This is good healing for me. Saturday, we were up on Meridian Street on Laurel. We had our dancers up there. What story? Some some lady invited us up there for their oyster fest. And uh, they invited us to do some songs for them. My my dancers at I had are gone today fishing. Couldn't find them nowhere. <laughs> so I got one here. <laughs> Only got one that is bashful. That's all it means. One. Anyway, I got some songs that I can share. I'll sing a I'll sing the song that we use for closing the table. My brother George used to sing it up at Little Bear and other, other places where we used to travel. Closing the table so we can carry on the work that has to be taken care of today. Oh, oh, oh.
sing our Indian songs four times. The verses are four times. Honoring the four seasons, the four directions. Honoring Mother Earth, the sky, and the things that grow on the land, things that grow in the ocean, seafood. Our people respected all these things that surround us. There's lots of food and medicine in these trees that up here on the hill. Where they used to go and gather their medicine for different things, any ailments that bothered them. If the kids had any sores on them, they would gather medicine to take care of those sores. They had sore throat, they'd go and gather medicine for that sore throat. They all knew, they were all taught how to find their, the things that they need to make things better for themselves. Here come the settlers. Here come the settlers and ruined all that. Here come the, the people that changed our ways, took our language away. It's all coming back now. Our people are starting to rebel and want their language and their ways back. Because it, 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 it's, it's a way of life for them. When I was in the setting sun years ago, Back in the 40s, 50s, my Uncle Joe Hilaire taught me many songs and dances. And that's what I carry on today with my, my children, my grandchildren, and my great-grandchildren. I teach them the songs and the dance. So it'll be a, carried on after I'm gone. I tried this at the tribal school back in the 90s. Working with Cynthia. We had dancers that I trained every day at the tribal school. And we traveled to different schools to share culture exchange to show them our culture, our songs, and our dances. Some of the kids are growing up right now that I taught. Every once in a while I run into them and I ask them, do you remember the songs that we practiced and taught? And they'd say yes. Do you remember the dances? they say yes. I said you should never forget those songs and those dances, as long as you live, you teach your children and your grandchildren and your great-grandchildren these songs, so they will never, never go away. This is the teaching of our people, the teaching of our culture, the teaching of our Chilang. I only hope that most of you listen to the songs that you hear and try to remember how the beat goes, how the song goes, and teach them what you know. Teach them how to pray to the Great Spirit. Teach them to give thanks to the Great Spirit for all the things that we have today, that we have left. <clears throat> we don't have much left, but we're gaining them back now. We've got teachers like Cynthia, like Bill, who wrote the alphabet for us, 
to spell the words that we say. We're only fortunate enough to have that. People that are interested enough to teach our children what they need to know. I'm only sorry all of families here in Lummi don't attend the gatherings where the teachings are taking place. They don't know what they're missing. They don't know what they're losing because they don't attend. They don't listen. And if they don't listen, the kids aren't going to listen. If they don't speak, the kids aren't going to speak. <coughs> so we got to practice. The kids see us practicing, they'll practice. They only do what they see the parents and the aunts and the uncles and the sisters and brothers do. It's all they do, it's all they know. What they see, what they hear. I'm not bawling you out. I'm trying to enlighten you. Enlighten you to what we're trying to do here. It's only a beginning. I heard the man ask, how many grandparents are here from the committee? How many stood up? That shows how much interest they have in us. That shows how much interest they have in what we're trying to do. Thank you. So if you see anybody that belongs to that grandparent committee, ask them why they never come here. Why they don't go to the meetings. See what they say. See what they say, why they don't go. My grandfather, Ketelak Alair. <coughs> My nephew, Philip Alair, worked for Pendleton Woolen Mills down in Portland. And he worked and asked the factory there to build a, a blanket honoring Ketelak. And they called that blanket, Keep My Fires Burning. And on the blanket, it has the old man with his hand up in the air like this. And the children sitting around him. And the moon and the stars up there in the sky. And his songs that he sang floating around the sky. Lots of songs he had, war songs, table songs, lullabies, songs of sorrow, songs of victory, songs of war. All those songs that he had, that he passed on to my Uncle Joe, his older son, who taught him to us. I think Smitty and I are the only living ones left of the children of the setting son. There's a handful of girls and maybe a handful of boys that are left. I can only remember. Betty and myself and Armor Joe. We 
We used to have a lot of fun traveling around in the old bus up and down the coast here, singing our songs as we travel. Just a few words, dear ones, sharing with you a little bit of what, what we should be doing, what we should be sharing with our children. Our most important thing we have on earth is our children, our important people, our children. The things we teach them, they'll never forget. Blessings on our children, on our elders, our leaders. Keep them safe from harm.
Penny Carroll. Penny Carroll. I'm it. I'm it. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to make her way out. The cotter. I, I didn't see her leaving, but we caught it. <laughs> As I was telling the, the people here many, many years ago, I worked with enrollment for 25, 30 years or more. And I saw the closed records of the children that were adopted out from our reservation. Many, many of our children were adopted out. We need a program where we need to go back and look at the old records of the Bureau of Indian Affairs to find our people that are lost out there. I know lots of families that have lost four, five, and six children to the system. And we need to go back and look for them. It's always been on my mind. Where did those kids go? Will we ever see them again? This is some of my big concerns as I look at a gathering like this, how important these things are. I can feel Bernadette's feelings of the grandchildren. I felt the hurts of the grandmothers that lost the grandchildren. I felt the hurts of the mothers that lost their children and the fathers that lost their children to the system. 
taking our children away. I think the main thing is <coughs> keep in mind finding those that are lost. Not just what's happening today, but go back and find all of those that are lost to help increase our population of our people. That's what I had on mind when I heard the words being spoken today, remembering the ones that are lost. Because there are many, many of them that are out there. Many, many of them. Those records were sealed and they were locked up. We have no access to them. We need to find a way to get to that system to unlock those records. <laughs> because we as a nation are strong enough now to find a way to do that. But anyway, such a beautiful gathering this evening. I appreciate each and every one of you for the help that you're doing, helping keeping the young people on the straight path, knowing who we are and where we come from as a people. Because very fast we are losing who we are as a people. If you don't know your tongue of our people, we're going to lose very quickly. We need to have our own identity. Like Phil Dalton is saying, remember the songs, remember the tongue of our people. This is what makes us who we are. Yes, it's nice to have an education in the outside world because I know we have to support our children in the outside world with jobs. We have to feed the children, but we also have to remember who we are as a people. Don't lose your identity. I'm so proud of the Canoe family here that went to Bella Bella. I am so proud of each and every one of you. Beautiful job. Because learning the ways of our people is important remember who you are. But I just had to share these few words with you this evening of how much I appreciate all that you folks are doing today. I just see how many It is true. Um, we, what we do is we children are my relatives, but their mommy's deceased, and the father is somewhere. But we know these are our relatives, so we have to look individually at these cases and change our code or our policy so our babies can be enrolled. And there are adult children that are trying to be enrolled, and their parents are gone already. And so. That's just some, some work for the younger generation to think about. We need to roll up our sleeves and look at that. That doesn't mean lower our quantum. We just look at the lineage of our families and where they come from. I know those are my relatives. They're lame and they're not enrolled. And the parents are nowhere to be found. So just cases like that so thank you for bringing that up we got another granny there yeah one thing i wanted to follow up on is that the importance of the grandparents committee nothing like that's going to happen again because the permanency is reviewed by the grandparents committee before it goes anywhere off our reservation out of our nation We've already reviewed three cases. Only approved one, sent back for more information. Because they didn't notify all family. They didn't notify and contact their family. They didn't even know who their family was. So they have to contact the family to find out. And gather that history of that child. We still have four more cases on top of that we're yet to review. They've noticed their records are not complete. 
But it's the importance of the grandparents committee to review those cases before they go out for adoption or permanency anywhere outside the family. So no, nobody, no child is ever sent off to somewhere where they'll never be found again. We're going to keep our children home. But I do need greater participation in grandparents. Because most often it's only just me and the committee and the committee. So I am seeking recruitment from our grandparents to, to participate strongly in these processes because we work with Penny Carroll and DCC, the child consultation team. A few more show up there, but I need some that meet with the children's services in reviewing the cases for the permanent children. I just wanted to follow up on what you had to say that it, it's not going to happen anymore. I won't let that happen anymore. I won't leave my position until I know that I have somebody that will follow. I well, we'll see up. Before we part our ways, uh, I just wanted to announce and introduce our friend here, Juan Juice, Ray Thunderchild. Saskatchewan and wanted him to stand up. My cousin Satsupton wanted me to stand him up and we're doing this play. The ones who did that, what about the promises? And thanking my cousin Daryl for all the endless work he does. And, and this play is really, really means a lot to me. You know, it's called uh, Sunny Six Killer Buys the Redskins. And it's going to be a really, I really think it's going to be a hit. I, not just because I'm in it, but I think it's going to be, it's going to be a lot of fun, though, and it's got a good, beautiful story to it. You know, and uh, we were, we've been having a lot of fun with the rehearsals and practicing and just laughter, and then the, then the sincerity and the serious part of it too is in there. And uh, you know, I just wanted to introduce our brother here and the plays. It's going to be at Watkins Community College on September 20th. And it's going to be a lot of fun. And there's history and there's, there's healing in it for our people. You know, but I just wanted to give the brother a chance to introduce himself and say a few words. And I know he speaks his language for his people back home. He was admiring the, the way we're taking care of this evening here. Awesome. Greetings, my relatives. My name is Ray Thunderchild. My nickname is Ray Thunderchild. My Indian name is Manchus. Manchus means cancer, a bug. What my grandmother saw when I was a young man was one, one person you could never keep still. That's why I'm over here. <laughs> but, you know, I just uh, thank, you to, thank you to elders for the good words that were, they were talking about. Where I come from, we barely have any more elders left. We, they always say the next generation is to take over. This is where I come in also now. Where I come from, I'm the protocol keeper. When our chief talks in front of you people and you're like this, he has to speak the language. I interpret for him. This is my job when I go home. We have societies back home. The society I'm president of is called the Cowboy Society, which is the people of the round dance. I take over for that for four years and pass the hat on next uh, in two more years yet. 
but I also come to, you know, invite people to come to my territory. We look after people when they come to visit our territory. I'm very fortunate also that my mother is still alive, and she's very active in the cultural uh, aspect that we do these things, but we do a lot of work like that. My sisters are also the protocol keepers for the women to tell them how to do it, what to do it, to prepare the food for any ceremony that we have. My family are very, very, how do you say that, very instrumental in a lot of things that happen at home. I, they call upon me. Sometimes they fly me home to go speak on behalf of the family. I got some sad news this afternoon when I was on Facebook. One of my nephews passed away. Once again, thanks to technology, I don't have to be there now to sing for them. I can just sing over the phone, let the family know that how sorry I am that I can't be there for them. I told them my heart is with you, my soul is with you, but physically I can't be there. And I told them that I'm with other family here right now. If you guys, if you guys know Vivian George is my adopted mother. The late Anton was alive, they have brought me into that family because they were struggling with the boys. And all the boys used to come to me to talk with them. I'm a powwow singer. They, were, they wanted to learn how to sing in that style. They were struggling with that. I took them in a sweat lodge, I talked to them. And that's all I could do was talk with them. It was up to them to follow that path after that. I'm very honored that Daryl asked me to come here to be a part of his play also. To me, I'm an actor up in Canada. I've been acting for 22 years now. If ever you get a chance, there's a TV show called Blackstone. I'm in that show. But it's, <laughs> I have to warn you, be very careful when you watch that show. We swear a lot in there. But it's a part of the First Nations community that we have back in Saskatchewan and all over Canada. The politics behind it, the greediness behind it, we just portray it just to let the people know we're not perfect either. We just want to, we just want to show everybody